Welcome to yet another interesting time in information technology class. My name is Gogo Ella Thompson, and in today's lesson, we'll be looking at the topic data processing under the theme basic computer operations and concepts. In this lesson, we'll be looking at what data becomes after it's been processed, and we'll also find out how data is being processed. So let's begin. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to do a few things. First, you should be able to define data processing. Next, you should be able to list the stages in the data processing cycle. Going on, you should be able to describe each stage in the data processing cycle. And finally, you should be able to list the features of a computer that make it an excellent tool for data processing. Now, take a look around your environment. I'm sure there are lots of things you can taste, see, hear, touch, and feel. And there are also facts about these things that are known. For instance, today's date, your age, the color of your favorite fruits. Each fact about things is called data. Data are raw facts and figures about an event, an activity, a person, a thing, or a place. And some examples of data include a person's name, today's date, a person's height, the time, a person's address, a class, a person's age, or the color of anything. It is important to note that data on its own doesn't make much meaning. But when it is arranged through processing, it becomes more useful. And this more useful form is called information. In other words, information is processed data. And in most cases, to form information, lots of data are gathered together and processed. So we can see useful information from books, report cards, ID cards, from the news, from music, from movies, even from conversation with friends, and a whole lot of other places. There are different types of data or forms of data. The five types of data we will be considering in this lesson are numeric data, alphabetic data, alphanumeric data, audio data, and graphic data. From the word numeric, it tells us that numeric data are numbers. For example, a person's phone number is made up of just numbers. And so that's an example of numeric data. Some other examples of numeric data are 5202656 and so many other numbers. The next type of data is the alphabetic data, which is also referred to as labels or strings. From the name alphabetic, we can tell that this type of data are made up of alphabets. So the different letters of the alphabet from A to Z, which forms words, all fall into alphabetic data. So some examples of alphabetic data are the word orange, as well as abbreviations such as UNICEF. The next type of data we'll be looking at is the alphanumeric data. And as you can see, it's a combination of alphabets and numbers. So for alphanumeric data, we have combinations of numbers and alphabets. Some examples of alphanumeric data can be seen in an address where you have combination of numbers and words. This type of data can also be seen in couplet numbers, which is a combination of alphabets and numbers. The next type of data we have there is audio data. And this refers to data that are in the form of sound, for example, music. And finally, we have the graphic data, 
which is also referred to as visual data or video data. So some examples of graphic data are pictures, images, diagrams, videos, and so on. Having looked at the different types of data, let's proceed with this lesson by looking at data processing and how data is being processed. Now, data must go through a process of transformation before it can be useful. And this process is called data processing. It is important to note that data can be processed manually or electronically. In data processing, data must go through some stages or steps for information to be produced. These stages form what we call the data processing cycle. There are six stages in the data processing cycle. The first is the data gathering stage. The second is the data preparation stage. The third is the input stage. The fourth is the process stage. The fifth is the output stage. And the sixth is the storage stage. We will look at each of these stages and what is required in each stage. Starting with the first stage, which is the data gathering stage. This requires the collection of data and data can be collected using different methods. Some of these methods are observation, interview, questionnaire, document analysis. Now there are instances when you need to observe the environment and collect data. And that is what observation is about. There are other instances where you need to collect data from people by interacting with them. And this can be accomplished using the interview method. You can also give people questions and options to choose from. That's the case with questionnaires. You can also gather data from documents and that's the case with document analysis. So after the first stage, which is data gathering, we now move to the second stage, which is the preparation stage. At the data gathering stage, lots of data are collected, both wanted and unwanted. By this, I mean the ones that are useful and the ones that won't be useful. So in the preparation stage, the data is prepared by selecting only the wanted data required to form the desired information. And there are some activities that are carried out in the preparation stage. Some of these activities include sorting, spell checks, error checks, and data verification. After the stage is the next stage, which is the input stage. Now, input is the act of putting the data in the required format using the required tool. We can impute data manually by using our pen and paper. We can also impute data electronically by using computer input devices, such as your cameras, your keyboard, your scanners, your mouse, and so on. After imputing, we move over to the next stage, which is the process stage. As humans, as we receive data through our five senses, our brains automatically process the data. But when it comes to using the computer to process, the central processing unit is responsible and the central processing unit is found in the system unit. So once you impute data using the different input devices, the central processing unit processes the data. And after processing comes the next stage, which is the output stage. Immediately after the process stage, when we get to the output stage, we are no longer talking about data. We are now talking about information because at the output stage, what is being presented is the information. So the information process is presented in a form that is understood by the receiver. 
For example, the information can be displayed on the monitor or on paper. It can also be printed out as well as being heard from a speaker. And then let's move over to the final stage, which is the storage stage. It is important that we have access to information whenever we need it. It therefore means that such information needs to be stored. Information can be stored manually using file cabinets. It can also be stored electronically using storage devices. Having looked at the different stages in the data processing cycle, let's proceed by looking at the features of the computer that makes it an excellent tool for data processing. Now, what is a computer? What are its features? A computer is an electronic device which accepts data as the input, processes the data, and gives out information as outputs, which can then be stored temporarily or permanently. From the features highlighted, the computer has the ability to accept inputs, process the inputs, give out outputs, and also store. You can see that these features tally with some stages in the data processing cycle. It is important to note that actually the computer can carry out each stage in the data processing cycle. And this makes it an excellent tool for data processing. Let's look at other reasons why the computer is an excellent tool for data processing. First, the computer has a very fast processing speed. Secondly, it gives accurate results provided the input is accurate because the computer works with the principle of garbage in, garbage out. Thirdly, the computer can handle very complex tasks that may not be easily handled manually. Next, the computer carries out every task exactly as it should, unlike humans who can do it anyhow when they're tired. And finally, the computer has very large storage capacity for data and information. Having seen all these features, we've come to the end of this lesson. But before we leave, Let's have a quick summary. In this lesson, we learned that data are raw facts and figures about an event, activity, person, thing, or place, and that when data is processed, information is produced. Next, we learned that the types of data are numeric, alphabetic, alphanumeric, audio, and graphic data. Going on, we learned that data can be obtained using different methods, such as observation, interview, questionnaire, and document analysis. Also, we learned that data processing is a process of transforming data to form information. Furthermore, we learned that data processing cycle refers to the stages data go through to be transformed into information. Next, we learned that the six stages in the data processing cycle are data gathering stage, data preparation stage, input stage, process stage, output stage, and storage stage. And finally, we learned that the computer is an excellent tool for data processing. Now, let's try out some exercises. Which of the following best describes data? Here are the options. A. Processed facts. B. Prepared facts. C. Raw facts. D. Arranged facts. And the correct answer is C, raw facts. Let's try out one more. From the lesson, there are dash stages in the data processing cycle. 
Here are the options. A, 4, B, 5, C, 6, D, 7. The correct answer is C, six stages. With what you've learned so far, I believe you now know what data processing is and why the computer is an excellent tool for data processing. Till we meet in our next lesson. Bye-bye.